Uh, let's get to our guest. We don't want to waste any of his time because he is killing it right now. He is, man, over a thousand games played in the NHL. He was a legend for the Minnesota Wild. He moved up the ranks there. He was assistant GM, and now he gets uh, one hell of an opportunity as he is the current head coach of the Florida Panthers, ladies and gentlemen, and NHL legend Andrew Brunette. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us, sir. Hey, guys, no problem. Bruno, thanks for hopping on, man. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I was pumped to get you, and I was watching last night's game, and I'm like, oh, gosh, like, come on, give us something. Come on, boys, come back. Give us. We want a lively Bruno on here. And uh, But what, you guys are on this Western swing. You guys have been playing good, though, and uh, just kind of, what, you just ran into one last night? Yeah, we ran into one, you know, a, a tough, you know, you're – you kind of back to back and then you make a you know long trip out west and um you know you kind of caught in between days and and you know calgary's a desperate team they kind of steamrolled us a little bit earlier and we weren't maybe on our on our game so it happens it's hockey we all we all understand those parts of the season yeah so I, you know what i i'd like to stick with talking about the panthers uh and i'd like to get some stuff about you and your playing career and, and kind of getting into coaching maybe at the end here but um you know it this is a team that I, I I love watching. I love watching the style. You guys kind of check all the boxes, right? And, and when you're looking up and down that lineup, I'm like, this guy makes this guy makes an impact on every game. This guy can do this, and and you guys kind of got that that part covered. What kind of came together? I mean, you guys were a good team last year as well, but what's kind of come together this year and really kind of ignited you guys? Well, I mean, I think last year, you know, to me, the process kind of started last year. I think, um, you know, we we really got into a, you know, a really good start, um, you know, and we kind of, we're highly competitive and, and I keep saying, you know, we played Tampa and Carolina so many times and those teams made us better. And we, we figured out finally that, you know, we can compete with these guys. Um, we're as good as, as these guys. And we added some pieces, you know, I think, you know, I, it's my third year in the organization and, and we really added some competitive people. We, we added a Hornquist, um, that, that brings compete every night. We didn't have a lot of it, you know, you know, through that time we brought in, we brought in Goudash, um, you know, and then we brought in the Sam Bennett and we brought in these guys that brought a different element that we didn't have before. Um, and we just really developed a swagger and, and figured out, Hey, we are a good team. And if we play the right way and we are very competitive and compete all the time, we can play with anybody and, and, you know, I think we added some speed in the Verhage and the Duclair, and, and and we started playing maybe a little bit more higher tempo game. Um, not to get long winded here, but <laughs> sorry, I am. But yeah, I think we added a lot of pieces, and it, and it built some swagger. And we really, after our playoff game, our playoff series last year against Tampa, I, I think guys really realized, hey, we're not that far off from winning a cup. And they went through the summer, and you know, I felt the confidence grew and then we started the year on a huge, you know, I think we won 10 or 12 games in a row and it, we just taken it from there. You know what? It's a great point. I didn't even think about that. It's like you, you played those teams because of the circumstances so many times And those two teams, you mentioned the Carolina, the, uh, the Tampa, those are the teams that are, that are built a particular way, right? Like they have an answer any way you kind of want to play, they can play and they play a high tempo, high skill game. And it kind of shows you guys like what's expected. How are we going to match up? And then that, that that you mentioned in the playoffs, man. I thought last year that was the best playoff series uh, of them all. I mean, it was awesome. It Easily. had a little bit of everything. So so like, what did that do for the group too? Because I felt like I felt like as an outsider looking at this organization, the last two years this team got a little bit of a we'll punch in the mouth mentality. You know what I mean? And maybe that's what was lacking. It was it's been skilled for a number of years, high-end talent. Now you got some depth guys, and they got a little bite to the Panthers now. Yeah, totally. And that's exactly, you know, we we had some bite. We had some compete. We had, uh, we're going to play in your face. We didn't back down. I mean, Tampa, you know, if you look at the evolution of Tampa, you know, they were a highly skilled team for for years and years. At, you know, Rupp, or even when we, when I coached it, we, we saw them coming, and we saw them growing, and, and you knew how skilled they were. But they didn't win until they figured out, you know what, we need a little compete. We need, you know, the Gaudreaux and the and the Coleman's, and we need to get that edge, the 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 Yanni Gerd and the Chernak and you know Pat Maroon, and we needed a little bit of that to to get us over the hump. And you know, the year before that, 
you know, my first year here, they, they kind of intimidated us a little bit, you know, and, and played a physical in your face. And we didn't really want a whole lot to do with it. And like I said, the pieces that we added, you know, Patrick Hornquist isn't going to back down. He's not going to fight anybody, he ain't, but he ain't backing down from anybody. He's going to go to his areas. Goodash was really good at, and, and, you know, picking the spots and, and, and not backing down. And, and it grew, you know, through our whole culture of our group became that kind of competitive group with those guys around, you know, you see your Brudeau, your and, and Eklad and everybody seems to play, you know, a little bit, Hey, we're, we're, we're not backing down. We're not afraid. We're as good as anybody. We believe in, but, and we're, we're, we're here. We're here to, to make an impression. Go ahead, Gums. Coach. I love Big Bob. Absolute <laughs> legend. How nice is it having a stable guy in net like that night in, night out on a team? Well, you're spoiled. And, and I say this all the time. I'm extremely spoiled all the way around. I mean, but but Bob's been um, – but Bob's great. And and we're, we're a highly entertaining um, at times – uh, for a coach is not as entertaining, but we're gonna we're gonna get a lot of chances. We're gonna give up chances, and there's certain nights that you feel bad for Bob, but he's just so talented and and, and athletically gifted and a competitor that you know maybe we don't put him in the best situations. And you know, talking to him the other day, you know, you feel bad maybe number wise he's not in in the conversations for all these different awards. But if you watch our team and and watch kind of how we, you know, we're, we're going to give up some looks and we hang him out to dry a little bit more than I would like, but he's highly competitive and he makes the saves and he allows the goals. He, he really doesn't care unless we win, you know, and that's rare in, in that position. And we're lucky that, you know, he's always ready to compete for us. I got to ask you though, Bruno, because uh, you mentioned that I had you as a coach in Minnesota. And so I got to know you then. Obviously, I, I played against you. Um, I knew about you. I knew, I, guys, you guys have seen the goal, the biggest goal in Minnesota Wild history. We'll get to that one a little bit later. But uh, you were like, you were that guy that just connected with the players, right? Like it, it was, you, you came to the rink and it was you and Darby Hendrickson. And it was like, I, I was pumped when you go in the rink and you see you guys, right? And we get to work with you guys before practice, after practice, all that good stuff. Even before we came on here, I posted something on social and I there was two players in, in the league still that, that uh, sent me a message like, oh, we're going to tune in. Bruno's the best. So I guess my question to you is, how do you translate? Like, you go – I talked to Tony Granato about this before too because he went from assistant coach to a head coach and then back to assistant. And and it kind of difficult. Did, did you find that there was any – because you're, you're kind of there as being the middleman to some degree and kind of being that bridge. And now all of a sudden you're in this head coaching position. Did you have to change things? Is, is that something new? I mean, it, 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 it you know, it's different. And, and the players look at you, you know, Rupper, as we all know, they always look at you differently. It's easier to be an assistant coach than a head coach. And, and I understand that. But I think for me, you know, I just wasn't going to change. I am who I am. And, um, you know, I care deeply for my players. Um, but you have to make hard decisions and you just hope you're open and honest with them. And, you know, sometimes they understand, sometimes they don't. But I always feel it's in the best interest of, you know, the team, but also communicating with the player that, you know, how much I understand what it's like to be a player. And I, I played a bunch of different roles um, and it's hard. It is really hard and it's not always fair, but I try to make it as honest and open as I possibly can. And I believe in my guys always, and I want the best for them. They sometimes can't understand it, but at the end of the day I do. And, uh, you know, I think, players are very very perceptive so i think if and, and this is a really difficult situation it's different if you go into your own team and you have your own identity but if you change they see right through you and you're done and yeah. and i think you know authenticity is huge um to be to be a leader to be a coach um to be a, a you know a good teammate authenticity is huge and i felt i was i've always been those things so i haven't changed um it is different like i said you know, when you play three and three, like, you know, Rupper, Rupper had the great, it has the greatest backhand of all time, actually. His stick, it was so great. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> best I backhand had, of all time. <laughs> you know what, Bruno? It was funny. I, I had my first, my first NHL training camp. I'm drafted by the Islanders and training camp was in Lake Placid. And I go out there and I, I say my draft year, 
whatever. I didn't, I didn't score much. I was like kind of a, I was a project, right? So I had like 16 goals, my, my rookie year in the OHL. And I, I remember 12 of them were on my backhand and I came into, I came into a uh, training camp and I'm at Islander training camp. And all of a sudden the, the, the practice ends, we had a scrimmage, Mike Milbury, the GM at the time, obviously comes down on the bench and he, and he walks out on the ice. So Zamboni's getting ready to come out. Everybody else off the ice. He walks on the ice in his shoes. And I'm like, Oh gosh, he's like, He's like, if you, he goes, if you go to your goddamn backhand one more time, you'll be going back to Erie on the next, on the next play. And so he came out there and he was making me do all these shooting things that I like. And, and so the rest of the training camp, like I was afraid to use, I, you know what? I used it so much. I'm glad you recognized it, but I, yeah. I got punished for using it. <laughs> it was a weapon. That nasty curve, that nasty curve the, the straight stick, right? Curve. Yeah, I'd pick it up. And I'm like, holy shit. But then you'd. You'd have that. Oh, sorry, I can't say that. But you had that backhand. <laughs> I, I just like, and we played three on three. And I guess part of being a head coach, nobody wants to play three on three with you, or they 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 rough you up and and run you. But as an assistant coach, is the best part ever. It wasn't as much fun for the players because they usually weren't on the lineup. But we tried to make it fun, and yeah. Rupper would just, yeah, he was uh, his backhand was. I'd be just like, wow, it was a Sidney Crosby <laughs> backhand. It, when I got to when I got to Pittsburgh, uh, I always heard about Sid's straight stick, and uh, you know players look at the sticks on the rack, right? And Sid goes and picks up my stick. He's like, "What is that?" It's like it's pretty. It was it may have been straighter than his, and he was like, "Oh my gosh!" I'm like, "Yeah, I don't I don't use it as quite the weapon. I use it as a weapon a different way than you do." You know, and it was uh, but it, it was it was good. But, I don't you know, know. I, I'm in three and not in game sevens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, you know what? I want to ask you about a couple players yeah. and um, a couple guys there sure. that I, I I love watching from afar, man. Um, it, and you know, Mike Johnson said it to me the other day. I don't know if it's around your guy's room or whatever. He referred to Ryan Lomberg as Lamborghini, and it's the coolest yeah. fucking name. I, I love it. <laughs> so Lamborghini. I watched this guy, and maybe it's me because of the style or the way that I had to play the game. I feel like this guy makes something happen almost every shift like you know it's not the prettiest thing it's not always but but he makes he creates chaos on the ice and, and that's one of those guys you mentioned patrick cornquist like you t- what is what does lamborghini bring your lineup well he brings i mean he brings a lot of energy a lot of speed um and yeah he makes things happen um and and he's gonna stick up for all his teammates and they love him and he 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 brings something every night and what I've really been impressed with him, I think his little details of the game it, are, have been outstanding on as a, you know, coach speak kind of thing that where he's in structure a lot and he does a lot of the right things. And, and but, he, you know, he's a contagious type of personality and he's a contagious type of player for our team because we don't have a lot of guys like that. We're kind of built on a, being, a, you know, kind of a skilled uh, offensive team. And he brings this dimension, not that he doesn't have skill. I think he has really sneaky skill. But he brings a different dimension to our group that's so important for us. Um, and you know, they, they've Lamborghini, Lamborghini's the maybe the best nickname of all time. Uh, I've heard I'll be called the Scud Missile. Um, but he's, um, yeah, he, he's a, definitely a factor in a lot of the games that we play. And, and he was so big in the playoffs for us last year. And, and guys feed off of what he brings. Coach, uh, you played throughout your career in a lot of different hockey markets. I know you, you spent some time with a couple expansion teams. You were in Nashville for a little bit, Atlanta. Uh, and then you were in like the old school, hardcore hockey fan areas like Minnesota and even Colorado to an extent. And now you find yourself back again in like that non-traditional market as a head coach of the Panthers. What's that kind of like being down there in Florida? Feels like, feels like people are starting to catch on now. You guys are a good team. Feels like people are, there's a bit of a buzz about you. What's it like uh, being out in the town and around there and, and being able to just a, hey, on an off day, maybe cruise out to the beach or something. You gotta be loving it, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a great lifestyle. It was a, a, a great change for me. You know, I was in Minnesota for 20 years and, and uh, you know, you know, obviously in Colorado for, for three or four in Chicago played a year there too. But and then I was in the front, I coached front office. I, so I was part of the hockey market for a long time. And it was a nice little, little change for me personally. And just to get away from it, um, and, and a little bit of a challenge to how do we build, you know, the culture, how do we make the Florida Panthers relevant in the NHL, the obstacles, the hurdles, um, how do we grow the game? You know, so I thought that was a, a great 
challenge for 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 our staff and the organization to kind of try to attain. I was excited to be a part of it, and I think we're getting there. Um, we're the most entertaining team in the league, I believe, um, and our fans are appreciating. It's a loud building, even though we're not always sold out, but it's a hard place to play, and we're trying to build that, you know, uh, you know that San Jose from the uh, early, mid-2000s, that, that kind of building that when you come into our building, it's going to be loud, it's gonna, we're gonna play fast and we're gonna come after you and we're gonna set an identity and a tone to our game. Um, and I think we're, we're starting to get some, you know, we're, we're starting to get some support behind us. Uh, I think we're growing the game, maybe not to the extent, but as we all know, you gotta win the playoffs and, and that's our next big step. But I think we're in the right, you know, we're going the right, trending the right direction and we're gaining momentum. Hey, what about, uh, I always find kind of, nationally speaking, Jonathan Huberto doesn't get enough love. He, he just he just simply doesn't. And when we're talking about, and it's hard to, like, you know, I think so many times it's like com- comparing to McDavid or McKinnon or Crosby, but I don't think that this guy's that far, far off. Like this guy is that good. He's been on fire for you guys lately. Yeah. I mean, he's a special, a special talent. <clears throat> you know, maybe the most elite playmaker I've been around. Um, wow. he'd be great in three, by the way, Rupsky. He'd, he'd find you back door. For, he'd find me for back door he, clappers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> back door but backhand he, clappers. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> back door backhand clappers, which you have that in your game too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's an elite the way he sees the game and, and, you know, he, he's maybe not the trailblazer, um, that you see McDavid and all these other guys, but he creates, space he creates things that are very unnoticed and his puck protection ability is off the charts the way that he's slippery through his you know he's everything's in tight and and he's just i mean he's so underrated um and being here that you know i you f- sort of feel bad for these guys because there's so much skill there that, that maybe goes unnoticed but again for us we keep talking about it for us to gain notoriety and to be relevant is we got to win a playoff round he's very well aware of that and he's striving you know to win a stanley cup and he wants it bad and he's showing it this year so what when you think back in your career and playing and man i was going and i was looking at some of the some of your some of your numbers man from uh where were you what'd you have you what you were in you were in owen sound you were with weeks you know sound were you yeah yeah exactly you're, yeah you're with weeks you know and sound and, and I, I don't have it in front of me right now but your numbers were ridiculous. Oh yeah, I got it right here. Let you have 162 points your last year in, in Owen Sound. Jeez. So you, you always had you always can uh, get the points on the board and put the puck in the net. But um, your biggest goal it, it had to have been that that OT goal, Game Seven, right? Okay, like what what did that do? You know, does it take a while after you're done playing to kind of? I mean, you appreciate it when it happens. Obviously, you guys run that unbelievable run in 03. But do you? Do you sit back and like now you see like man that was on that was on Patty Wall that was on that was against Colorado in Game Seven of the playoffs. Yeah, I don't think at the moment you. I mean, yeah, I think you recognize the importance, but you, you didn't get to where you wanted to go, and and we're not all you know fortunate as you are, Rupp, you know that Rupper that you're able to. You know, you did it on the grandest stage, and and you won a cup, and and it would have been a totally different situation, and I'm sure you you probably have how you felt about this, but mine was, it, it was a perfect storm. It was, um, you know, hockey, Minnesota was the North stars left in 93, 92, or I think, and uh, maybe 93. And, you know, they're, they're missed pro hockey. And we kind of came in and there was a huge buzz in the city and, and it couldn't have happened for that town, for the state of hockey at a, at a, at a time that, you know, they needed something. And we were a team that, you know, that they kind of got behind. We, we played as, as much as we were, you know, penciled in or, or, or said we're defensive. We were actually a pretty good transition team. And we had a lot of really good players on that team that had long careers after that. But I think the city got really behind it. It was a great story. And you're just, I always say this, it, it was just your turn. It just got it. You know, it was you, it was your turn to make a play. And when you're on those kind of teams, um, you'd never really think about the individual moment at the time and you're kind of going on to the next series and as i look back it was special but it was special for that 
time and that and what that meant to the city, what that meant to the state of hockey, what it meant to the wild. And more importantly, that group of guys, you create a special bond. We didn't, weren't able to win it all. We didn't get, you know, you know, we didn't get the cup and we didn't, you know, fulfill all of our dreams, but we had a great run and we enjoy each other. And we became, you know, that special connection when you're in together with somebody in a group of people that, you know, it, it, it never goes away. And, and I charge that, cherish that more than, than, than the goal, but yeah, you never really appreciate it till you're done to make a long story longer. <laughs> <laughs> Bruno, I got kind of a follow up on that. So, uh, yeah. growing up, I was I'm from Pittsburgh. I was always a huge Penguins fan, uh, but I also kind of pulled for the Avalanche out west. I don't know what it was, but Joe Sackick was a, was a huge uh, idol of mine. Where I kind of looked Joe? up to him in the way he played. And and Rupper just mentioned that goal and that game seven in that series. And I just remember watching that, and it was you and Pascal Dupuis. And you guys just seemed to show up in these moments, and it kind of like ripped my heart out as a kid. And then years later. Dupuis is a penguin and I'm cheering for him. And then you actually end up, uh, I can't remember if you signed or if you were traded. I think you signed with Colorado and uh, you're riding shotgun playing on the wing with Sackick. Can you talk a little bit about what that was like making that transition, going over to a rival and playing with Joe, who was probably one of the, in my mind, one of the most underrated players of all time. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. The most underrated player. Um, Joe had an uncanny ability to recognizing moments and in games and and the bigger the game the better he was and he was such a joy to play with uh his intelligence was off the charts obviously um but he was also very selfless um he was never about him he didn't want any of the spotlight he just wanted to be one of the guys and that was you know to be around a true superstar um i was very fortunate to see that part and i really appreciated you know, his personality, how he went about his business, how he treated all his teammates. There was no ego. It was just Joe being Joe. So I, I, you know, he was probably my favorite player at the time, just, you know, in the league, you know, we always watch players and, you know, and that when I was in Minnesota, we played Colorado and we were up in, I think in game six, two, nothing. And kind of closing the game, we're a good defensive team. And he just sensed the moment and he was unstoppable for about six minutes and he scored two goals. And I remember thinking, I've never seen anything like this. And and I've been able to play against a lot of great players. It, it was truly amazing where he senses these things. And then to go to Colorado and then see it day in and day out, um, you know, the overtime goals that, you know, I was part of that he would score in the playoffs or just something simple as, as a face-off where, you know, he might've got licked all night, but when the game was on the line, he never lost that one. And um, so it was a very special time and I was very fortunate to play with him. And and we had some good chemistry and we remained good friends. More importantly, he was, you know, a better, as great as a player he is, he's a greater guy off the ice. So I was very fortunate, you know, the highlight in my time playing there. You know, you just mentioned uh, playing with him and, and a guy that we have in common that I really loved playing with. And uh, I, I just liked his stuff. He, he was grumpy all the time. But uh, he he was a gamer, and that's Miko Koivu, and you have a good history with him as well. He's getting his jersey retired in March. Uh, jersey going up in the rafters there at the XL. Can you just talk about what your experience has been with Miko and what he's been like? Yeah, I mean he's he's the identity of the franchise. You know, I think there they know when you go into Minnesota, and you still know now, and it, and it, he's got a huge part of that is that it's going to be a hard game. And it's going to be a tight checking game and you're going to have to earn every, you know, inch of ice you're going to get in Minnesota. And, and I believe a lot of it, of that identity is, is through Miko, um, you know, a very stoic guy, very grumpy guy, uh, never happy <laughs> too much. And he's a hard guy to kind of get to know, but I think when you get to know him, um, you can understand and you appreciate, he is a very caring uh, guy. He's, he's a, a loyal leader. guy. He's a very loyal guy, though, right? Very loyal. Exactly. Very caring. He does even never say it. You know when you're around him long enough that, you know, he really appreciates and he's very loyal to the people that, you know, he believes they're doing the right things or sticking up for teammates, uh, showing up to play every day, showing up to work every day. And he has that kind of that quiet leadership that you feel when you're around it, that you know you have a standard to keep yourself up to because he's he keeps himself up to that high standard. 
Oh, caught me mid sip there. Uh, yeah, no, he's uh, he's awesome. He, I remember the, the the second I got to the second I got to Minnesota, I uh, I you know came in the room there, and he was sitting in the stallmate next to me. And I, I mean, I obviously knew his, he was a great player, and he's he's been there for a long time. And um, I I remember, and, and you know, because you were you know part of that organization as far as the coaching staff. You know, I was I was more or less for for these guys. Like I. I was kind of playing out. I knew I was going to be probably be retiring at the end of this. So I, I, I believe, or at least I was told I was kind of being brought in to be a locker room type guy and, and to help with some things. And so I went in there. I remember before the first game, it was like, it was like a morgue. Like I'm looking around and it's like, you know, and I remember I just tried to like, I feel like I should say something here. I was a new guy and usually you don't, I don't, you, I'm not that type to usually just say something in that situation, but I just started like, you know, just running my mouth and I won't say what I said, but. Uh, I started running my mouth and I kind of took a dig at Miko like next to me. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what do you say? You big finish, you know, whatever. And, uh, and <laughs> he kind of, he kind of just, and I, I remember I, I said it and then like guys across the room, I remember uh, like I, guys across the room were just kind of like time skates and they just look up and they're like, and they just kind of like, didn't know what to do. And I look at Miko and he looks at me with like, you know, his stern look that he always has. He looks at me like this and he just gets that little smirk. And it yeah, was like, yeah. from then on, we were like, we just razz each other. So we send each other, you know, dumb little photos of, you know, uh, we'll just give each other the middle finger and be like, hey, you know, and that's like, we're just like, you know, that's how we we, we kind of were. But he was, a, it, he, he's one of those guys, like, if you can handpick someone to go to battle with in a game seven, man, I want Miko Koivu on my team. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I, 100%, I played against them in a, and, and the big reason I resigned with Minnesota, you know, I was in Colorado. We ended up beating them that year, but Miko's just a young player. And uh, playing against him in that playoff series, I, I he was just so heavy and, and strong. And I just said, I, you know, and obviously he had offensive ability. And I'm just like, this is a guy that you're going to want to stand the cup with. This is a guy that is built for playoff hockey. And, you know, the way his demeanor and, and how he plays, is a guy that I really felt that I wanted to play with. And, I thought we could bring a cup to Minnesota at some point and, and I resigned there, but it was a lot of it was because I believed he had those abilities that you talked about that he's a guy that, you know, you're going to win with cause it's, it's, or it's going to be war to get an inch yeah. anywhere on that. Yeah, no, I, hey, listen, I, uh, I, I got one more thing. I want to tell a little story here, Bruno, and I don't want to embarrass you with it. Uh, I'll try not to. Uh, but he, so it, th this is no, this is a, a, and I mean this like because when I was there and you talk about us playing three and three and doing all those things, and and you know, fellas, like you know, they're like Bruno's job, like, these guys are keeping everybody ready, right? Like, I wasn't playing in Minnesota, I was, I was a scratch most games there, and just making it lively, making it fun to come to the ring. So, I love going in there, like I said before, I love seeing Darby, I love seeing Bruno's face coming in there. We joke around and and we had a good thing going. I remember, uh, <laughs> I remember we were in San Jose, and uh, we were in San Jose late in the season. And I, I, again, I'm playing out the year. I think these guys, these guys have been through it, man. They played in the league for a long time. They knew that they, you know, they check in on me. How you doing, man? You doing okay? Because I was, you know, I'd be a scratch for like ten straight games. And uh, so I remember one night, Miko was actually hurt, and he was he wasn't coming back yet, but he was traveling on the trip. So Miko goes to me. He goes, hey. Rupper, you want to go get a couple beers tonight? I'm like, yeah, let's go. So we went out to dinner and we had just a couple beers. And then he's like, uh, we went and had a couple beers somewhere else. And then he's like, uh, let's go to that Irish, that Irish pub on the way back to the hotel. I'm like, all right, we'll go back and have a couple beers. I mean, we're nothing crazy. We're having a we're just hanging out. So we walk in this place and we walk in, and Chuck Fletcher, the GM's there, Mike Yo, the head coach, Bruno. Uh, Darby uh, and uh, you guys, the whole staff's there. So Miko and I walk in and we're, we're just going to go have a beer and we see them and we kind of like wave, you guys waved us. And I, I turn to Meeks. I'm like, what do you want to do, man? Do you want to like, I mean, you know, Bruno, you've been there before, like as a player, like, you, you know, and he's like, no, let's have a beer. I'm like, all right, let's have a beer. So we have a beer and Chuck better move by Chuck. Chuck's like, he ducks out. See you guys have a good night. And he leaves. <laughs> so next thing you know, Bruno, and Darby come walking over and they've got the old, you know, like the beer between each finger, you know, and they have both hands coming over like, Hey boys, you know, giving us a couple beers. We aren't playing the next day. I haven't played for like seven straight games. We've won. We've been doing well. So I know I'm not going to get in the lineup. So we have some beers and uh, not, not too many, but we already had some prior. So anyways, the next morning, the next morning I go to the rink for pregame skate and uh, 
and Miko, I see Meeks. I'm like, Meeks, I feel like crap, man. He's like, yeah, I do too. I'm like, we're not playing. So it's like, we just get through this morning skate. Let's just get through the morning skate. And I'm going through the skate. And, you know, the way that the skates work is like, we got the guys who aren't playing, got to stay extra and do, some, you know, bag skate and do some extra. So I'm like, God, like I got to kind of pay the piper here. So we're out there and I'm getting ready to do the bag skate at the end of practice. And all of a sudden Bruno skates up to me and he goes, hey, Rupper, you can get off. You're playing tonight. And I go, and you skated away. And I was like, whoa, 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 what? I'm playing tonight. And you're like, yeah, you're playing tonight. I'm like, Bruno, what the fuck? You, you, you were feeding me beers last night. Why aren't you telling me I'm playing now? I'm like, what are you, what is this? And I remember you said to me, you're like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm the messenger, man. Like Yozy told me to tell you you're playing. So I remember I went and uh, I, I was like, oh my gosh, I walked in the locker room and, and, and Miko was just dying laughing. He's just, he's just howling. And I, I don't know. I think you said suits or somebody wanted uh, yeah. to dress some toughness in the lineup or something. I'm like, oh, here we go, Bruno. You set me up, but no, you, you're just the, the, the middleman there. Thanks for that one, dude. Yeah. Hey, makes you stronger. It makes you stronger. <laughs> here, have these. Have these. The next morning, you're the yeah. bearer of bad news. I'm like, hold on a second. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no, no. I'm not playing. You know, I remember I said to you, you said you're going. I go, why? I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> but no man one of the one of my favorites and uh great seeing you having success there i don't know if you guys got any more uh you want to fire away at them no good luck the rest of the way man you guys will you're gonna get over the hump this year man your team is so fun to watch you guys been flying from start to finish keep it going brother i appreciate that thanks guys anytime it was a pleasure to be on take care awesome. see you, you rapper see you soon see yeah, you guys we'll see you, man. thank you coach